Hollywood feuds are focused. Sean Constantine has just written this Betty and Joan, The Divine Feud, and we'll talk about the feud itself, you know, the, uh, the fighting and the bickering between these two great film stars. But, Sean, let's talk first about this, this charge, this allegation, this uh, whatever you call it, that Betty Davis was in some way responsible for the death of her second husband, Arthur Farnsworth. From where does that allegation come? Well, that's been a mystery for quite a few years in Hollywood. I'd heard the stories, but until I did the research, I uh, didn't know uh, the background of it. Uh, Arthur Farnsworth was her second husband, as you say. He was from Rutland, Vermont, and uh, they were married, I think, in 1941. And by 1943, their marriage was in trouble, it was said. And he died that year in August. And it was the official story is that he was walking down Hollywood Boulevard alone, and he stumbled and hit his head and uh, died three days later. And uh, some of the red herring stories that came out later said that he had actually uh, hurt his head before that in a motel. He had been discovered with another man's wife, and the man came in and hit him over the head. Uh, whereas I discovered uh, and was told that it was Betty, in fact, uh, that uh, had the outside interest, that she was in love with another man, and that was the dashing Vincent Sherman there. <laughs> that was the man that she was in love with. So Betty loves Vincent. Betty has something to do with Farney. She death. wanted a divorce. She wanted a divorce, and uh, he wouldn't uh, agree to a divorce. Okay, what's your source for the allegation? My source for the allegation? Uh, there was one reporter, uh, Hector Arce, uh, who knew Betty's sister. Uh, there was uh, another reporter from the Herald Examiner. I think Frida Dudley was her Well, name. how about William Grant Sherry, her third husband? And that was the, that was the, the, that was the source that I believed, because uh, William Grant Sherry is an artist, a uh, uh, well-known artist in California, and he was her third husband. And he told me the story that uh, Betty was with him that day and that she pushed him. William Grant Sherry, Betty Davis's third husband, joins us right now on the telephone. Do you hear us? Mr. Sherry. Yes, hello. Hi, how are you doing? Just fine, thank you. Did Betty Davis ever tell you that she had something to do with the death of Arthur Farnsworth? Well, it happened uh, about early in 1947. Betty and I were walking across Hollywood Boulevard on the way to her attorney's office. And um, as we got across the street and got near the curb, uh, Betty became very nervous and uh, looked very frightened. And I asked her, what was the matter? And she pointed to the curb and said, this is where I pushed Farney, and he hit his head on the curb. I thought he was drunk. That's, that was all she said about it, and we continued on in, but she continued to be very upset, and it took her quite a while to get over it. So do you believe, Mr. Sherry, that... Your former wife, the great Betty Davis, had something to do with the untimely death, shall we say, of her husband? Well, no, I would have no idea about that because I never gave it any more thought, really. Uh, I knew he had been hurt, and I knew he had uh, had trouble before that, and that was about all. I never questioned Betty after that about anything. Jim Bacon, I believe you about all these old Hollywood rumors. Do you buy it that Betty Davis was responsible? No, I don't really, because uh, it's just not Betty to... Uh, first of all, uh, he was alone when he fell. That, that's what the report was. Yeah. Uh, again, yeah. that was one of the red herring stories. Yeah. Another thing that came out afterwards, Geraldo, is that uh, we tried to get uh, the file in Warner Brothers. There was no file, and the autopsy report, which was filed in triplicate, have all disappeared. I know, Vincent uh, Sherman, did Betty Davis ever confess yes, what but, has to be criminally negligent homicide? Or? Yes, but not, uh, not about uh, that. I did not know that she uh, had said that she pushed uh, her husband. Um, it's a long, complicated story, which I'm saving for a book that I'm doing. But she did confess. She did confess to me uh, during the making of Mr. Skeffington that she was afraid that she had... Uh, inadvertently caused the death of her husband when uh, when he went to see her off when she was on, on her way to Mexico. And she was in love with you, Vincent. Yes, that's what she said. Uh, she was in love with you at the she time she was married. To she guy. confessed. Yes. yes. So well, she had a motive. She uh, wanted a no, divorce. No, no, I don't think so. 
Um, I don't think uh, Betty deliberately. Oh, I don't believe would, that either. No, I don't believe would, that would she do deliberately anything like no. that. No, I believe she was there though. Yeah. Why this epic feud between these two actresses dating back to when they were both very young? Well, I suppose uh, uh, they were both at the top of their profession. Um, despite the fact that they didn't like each other, the truth is that they were sisters under the, the skin. But um, I must tell you just one thing. Betty said that so far as Joan was concerned, she says, I don't care if she sleeps around, but she, if she could just act. That was her <laughs> attitude. Uh, Joan's attitude was, and she actually said this to me about just a few weeks before she died, I said to her that I was not going to the AFI uh, uh, party for, uh, for Betty, and she said, please don't go. She's such a bitch, you see. Well... That word's coming up a lot today. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As I say, uh, Joan called uh, Betty a bitch, and, and, and Betty referred to Joan as a whore very often. That whore from MGM. <laughs> yeah. Now, Sean, let's get off the, uh, the R-rated talk for a second. Is it a fact that Joan Crawford was more successful than Betty Davis in landing the men they targeted? Vince oh. Sherman, the exception, they both got him, but <laughs> generally speaking, did Joan, was she more successful with men? Men like Clark Gable. Of example. course she was. She was more glamorous than uh, Betty, and Betty envied that, I think. Also, Dr she was more uh, aggressive. Uh, Joan just went after what she wanted. True. Uh, Betty was not that way. Betty was uh, basically a New England gal. Um, my, in my opinion, uh, sex for Betty was a biological need. For Joan, it was an ego trip. That's what Joan said. I mean, yeah. she said uh, she was never a hypocrite about sex. She All right, said, let's, let's list these guys. Yeah. Clark Gable, Jim Bacon. What about the affair of Joan Crawford? Well, she had a, a big romance with Gable. Uh, and of course, Gable was uh, the great matinee kid over at MGM. You know, he always had someone in the dressing room at that time. I, by the way, I'm the only guy at Joan Crawford ever said she had a headache. <laughs> Vince will share Shelley, some of his secrets Shelley after Winter the program. Told me that what about Spencer Tracy? Uh, Spencer was with both of them, like Vincent. Spencer was uh, probably one of the great all-time lovers in Hollywood history. He had a big affair with Loretta Young. He had, a, of course, a famous affair with Katherine Hepburn. And uh, same with Joan. And uh, Not uh, with Betty, though. No, I don't think he's ever yeah, with never. Betty. Betty wanted him. Betty I was in the other side of town. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Duke? What about John Wayne? I think, uh, of course, Duke always liked Spanish girls. I, I, think, I think Betty would be a little bit too New England, too puritanical for Duke. But uh, I never heard anything about Duke and Betty. How about Duke, Duke, and, Duke no, and Joan? No, never Duke heard and anything. Joan, yes, it was reunion in France. He, uh, he, he told his yeah. wife, uh, his uh, third wife or his second wife after that, that uh, Joan pursued him, like Vincent said. You know, she was very aggressive, and she pursued him, and they had an affair during the, uh, the making of the movie. And then he ran from Joan after that. After reading Mommy Dearest, I don't wonder about that. <laughs> okay, they were together in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. They were almost together in Hush, Hush, Sweet Charlotte. We'll investigate those two uh, episodes in Hollywood lore, and we'll get back to some of the more modern feuds that are out there, like the one between Ryan O'Neill and Jack Nicholson and many, many others, because we are investigating malice in Wonderland. These are Hollywood feuds, and we'll be back to you in two minutes. Stay with us. <laughs> Extra strength Rolaids, 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX. 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. For the itch and pain of bug bites and allergic rashes, even the strongest hydrocortisone can't give you the same kind of relief you get from Benadryl cream because it stops the pain and blocks itch right where it starts. Benadryl cream and spray. If you think there's a longer lasting shine than tough acrylic future, think again. For long lasting acrylic protection, nothing outshines future. Monday, I soak my dentures. Tuesday, I brush. Wednesday, I soak. Wait, all you need is denture cream. Why soak when denture cream gets dentures nearly twice as clean? Minty fresh mouthwash ingredients, too. All you need is denture cream. Every day.
These are the anatomies of these Hollywood feuds. We are investigating the malice in Wonderland. Stay with us. The anchors who work at this station care about what it is that they're bringing into your living room every night. And even if the news is bad and it is very uncomfortable to talk about it, if in some way we can affect positive change, then it benefits all of us. The killers were convicted. We lived for the trial. They thought it was over. The criminal justice system duped us. You can imagine what it does to us. They're still waiting for justice on the next Geraldo. Tomorrow at 4 on Channel 2. Just when your diet is going great, you get a craving. That old familiar urge. A snack attack. Break the cycle with a new Crave-Free Weight Loss Program from Nutrisystem. Nutrisystem Craving Control Snacks actually help you break the cycle of craving, binging, and gaining weight. Don't wait. Call Nutrisystem today. Now lose all the weight you can at Nutrisystem for only $79. Knott's Berry Farm presents Snoopy's Birthday on Ice, the coolest show in town starring you know who and all his friends. It's all part of Camp Snoopy Days. We're jam-packed with fun to make every summer minute count. There's a big parade with all the Peanuts gang and lots of games and fun things to stretch summer to the max. Plus, this weekend, don't miss award-winning children's recording artist David Jack live. So for the most summer fun, come to Camp Snoopy Days at not Bright. Bold. Beautiful. Strouds. Tasty. Trendy. Terrific. Strouds. Strouds Back to School Sale. Your one stop for back to school dorm specials. Hard to find twin extra longs? Strouds has them. The biggest selection in the West. Sheet sets from $19.99. While at Strouds, pick up this handy checklist and save on everything for back to school. The cost of education has just come down. We talked about the skepticism, Sean, that many people, including Jim and Vincent, feel about the charge of Betty Davis being responsible for the death of that second husband. I think an equally incredible charge is that Joan Crawford seduced Rock Hudson. How did she manage that? that? Well, Mamie Van Doren also claims that oh, Rock seduced her. Mamie Van Doren's the first one that ever told me Rock Hudson was gay. And I said, why? And this is 1952. She says, I've been out with him five times. He's never made a pass at me. I says, well, maybe the guy's a gentleman. She says, no. But um, in her book, she claims they had sex yeah. on the, on the, ba on the uh, kitchen yeah. floor. <laughs> That's in her book. If you believe that, you'll believe there'll be a Liberace wife? Jr. What about his wife, though? <laughs> Let me move right along to whatever happened to Baby Jane. Now, uh, that was, uh, you know, Betty Davis was fabulous in it. She got the, uh, oh no, Joan got the Oscar nomination. No, neither, uh, neither one got, got an Oscar. I think she got no, nominated. Betty was nominated yeah. and Joan wasn't. Yeah. And Joan arranged to accept for the other nominees in New oh, York. Right. So the night of the awards, both actresses were backstage and Betty was sure she was going to win. And uh, the uh, actor who gave the award, I think, was Maximilian Schell, opened the envelope and it said Anne Bancroft. And Joan turned to Betty and said, excuse me, dear. And she went out and took the Oscar. And Betty said she stole my goddamn Oscar. She kept saying it last year. She was right. on Today so Show. So Joan accepted for Anne Bancroft. And therefore, for all the other nominees. And all the and other she right. stole the show that night. As Hedda Hopper said, she was the hit of the evening. Uh -huh. And Betty never forgot that. Never. Now, they were supposed to be together in Hush, Hush, Sweet Charlotte. And they started filming that together. They started filming, and they were in uh, Baton Rouge. And Joan, at this time, had uh, star billing. Uh, but Betty... Uh, had the bigger part, and she had co-producer status, uh, which some people say she used to, uh, to give Joan a nervous breakdown, which she did. And Joan wanted to get out of the movie then, and the only way she could get out, she couldn't quit, was to pretend she was sick. And she went and checked herself into the hospital. Yeah. And Vincent yeah. uh, visited I her up, in the hospital. I went up to see her in the hospital, too. Yeah. And uh, she's up there surrounded by Pepsi-Cola and cases of 100-proof vodka. <laughs> and, um, not the least bit sick. She had a Chanel uh, negligee on. And it came time, dinner time, she says, come have dinner with me. And I said, I hate hospital food. He says, who's going to eat hospital food? 
She picks up the phone. Louis Bianco, the maitre d' at Chasen's, come in. The dinner was catered by Chasen's in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So did Vincent Joan really phony it up? Vincent, there, Vincent too. has a story that. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I sent some flowers to her because I thought she was ill. I read she was ill. And she called to thank me and said, why don't you come down and see me? I want to talk to you. So I came down. That's when she said, well, I'm not really sick. Uh, I just want to get out of the park because she said, Betty has been influencing the director to cut me down, and I just won't stay in the... And I have, this is the only way I can get out of the picture. Then she locked the door and um, uh, invited me to, to come to bed with her. And I, I, it threw me for a loop. I must just, let me just say one thing. Well, wait a minute. What did you, what'd you <laughs> do? <laughs> Don't stop now. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to tell that story. I just want to say one thing. Uh, I, 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 um, I, I don't want to let myself go, uh, uh, be known as the great lover. It wasn't that. I just want to tell you, when you're directing an actress, if you're about the same age, if it's a harmonious relationship, uh, and you get close to each other. You have to if you're directing because you're dealing with human emotions. It's very, intimacy is very conducive when you're directing. And they want, those, they want sleazy affairs. They were affairs that I had great affection for both ladies. Uh, they were, in my opinion, extraordinary women, uh, dynamic, fascinating, and uh, it was very difficult to resist their charms. Yeah. Did one use you against the other? Because they really didn't like each other, did they? I, uh, yeah, that's true. I always thought, by the way, that uh, when Joan Crawford asked me to direct a picture before I just returned from London, I had the feeling that she really wanted me to direct her because she wanted to go for me because she had heard that I had had an abortive affair with Davis. I never believed <laughs> that she cared that much for me, do you uh, see? But that lasted three years, you know. Jim, summarize their, well, uh, their relationship, all, their all malevolence for each other. With me was invite me for dinner. Joan? Yeah. <laughs> and she had a headache. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Jim. What was that again? The hatred. Why? Where? Well, I, first off, they didn't know each other too well in the early days. One was at Warner's and one was at MGM. But they, and Joan was the star first. Right. And they, but they were top actresses of the screen. And that was a, that's what started the feud. Well, Claudia mentioned uh, pride, but ego. You also, the enormous ego both these ladies had, which you need as an actor, which you need in Hollywood to continue. Well, speaking of ego, the rumor right now, the hot rumor I hear, is that there's a tremendous feud brewing between Bill Cosby and Eddie Murphy. And Claudia will uh, either confirm or deny that notion in two minutes. Stay with us. <laughs>